Hello, it's time for GGSP, the show for younger gamers by gamers. I'm Jem. And I'm Rad. Today on the show, we create some me monstrosities and go in search of adventure in Metopia. Plus, the old school origin story of platform hero Rayman. One of the launch consoles for the very first Rayman game was the PlayStation 1. And here it is! Oh, wow, that is a piece of gaming history right there. Where did you even find this gem? Well... Brad, gem, has anyone seen my favourite pillow? Okay, so I hear you've been going a bit wild this week, Rad. If you're talking about the giant house of cards Darren built that I knocked over, I maintain that he shouldn't have built it in the hallway. Uh, no, Rad, I meant the game you've been playing this week, Wild at Heart. Oh, right. Well, yes, Gem, I have been playing the Wild at Heart. This charming little game is a bit like a digital storybook with 2D Pikmin vibes. You play as a young lad escaping into a magical forest where you recruit little sprites to help you fight, solve puzzles and collect things. The beautiful art style feels like an illustration, while the writing is super cute and just a little mysterious. Plus, the characters are creative and interesting and I'm actually quite invested in the story. But the very best part is the vacuum action. One of the main tools at your disposal is a big old sucky sensation, and it is so satisfying to use. I just love a good vacuum. But how does it compare to the poltergeist from Luigi's Mansion? Oh, well, that can capture ghosts, so you make a good point. Now to a little gaming news, though, and it is, of course, Sonic the Hedgehog's 30th birthday. Happy birthday to Sonic! And to celebrate, Sega has offered up a teaser for a new Sonic game due for release in 2022. There will also be some other cool things like a virtual symphony event, a Sonic animated series or two, and in-game events for Sonic mobile titles. We also caught a blink and you'll miss it glimpse of something Sonic related in Minecraft. And there's even going to be some Sonic themed stuff in Two Point Hospital. Paging Dr. Sonic got it diagnosed fast. In other news, there have been rumours that Valve could be working on a Switch-like handheld gaming device. Valve is the studio known for such things as the Portal games, the digital gaming platform Steam, and of course, my beloved Dota 2. And apparently, there was some hardware-related code found in a recent Steam client update, which referred to something known as Steam Pal. Some are taking this, along with some other bits of intel, as a hint there could be new handheld hardware on the horizon. Ooh, that's pretty huge news. And speaking of hardware, I came across some hardware handiwork from a gamer known as Satile, who managed to build a gaming PC inside the case of a Nintendo GameCube. With a few clever modifications, Satile was able to fit the components of a gaming PC into the cube, from graphics card to SSD, and even managed to change the exterior to a lovely coral pink. The classic GameCube console, which first released in Australia back in 2002, has become quite the icon, known for its compact, cubular design. Gotta love that cube tune! <laughs> uh, now let's get on with the show! I have a house of cards to rebuild, thanks to you, Rad. Don't build it in the hallway! Rad, come quick! The Dark Lord is stealing people's faces and we're the only ones who can stop them. For some reason, I didn't stick around to get the details, but we have to go now! Rad! Ugh! What happened to your face? My face? What about your face? Ah! Since the original game on 3DS, Miitopia is back with a version for Switch. In fact, I reviewed it back when it first came out, but this is your first foray into this weird little package, isn't it, Jem? It is indeed. And I am wondering why Nintendo thought this was the game that just had to be brought back in 2021. Mamma mia! If you're not familiar with the Miis that call Miitopia home, they're Nintendo's customizable avatars that you can make look like anyone. 
You, your friends, or even your pets. <laughs> ah, the power of a well-placed eyebrow. Yeah. In Metopia, you create and take control of one of these little guys and assemble a team to take down the face-pinching Dark Lord. <laughs> And look, I'm not siding with them, but some of the faces we made probably do deserve to be removed. Hey, that's on Nintendo. They gave us the tools, we just used them to create art. But Miitopia is trying to be more than just a funny face builder. It's also an RPG. Once you've got the look of your Mii's down, you can give them a personality and class that not only gives them a sweet looking outfit, but also some cool abilities in a fight. For example, a stubborn warrior can use patience and brace for impact, only taking half the damage they normally would otherwise. It's a little detail, but I like that bit of personal flair. It makes them feel more human. Yeah, it also adds a bit of spice to the otherwise by-the-numbers combat. Literally, you can be a chef. As you sharpen your blades or flex your magic against the cute but creepy creatures you come across, you can pretty much let the turn-based battles run on auto. You only really need to get involved to replenish wounded party members' health or mana, or occasionally put them in the safe spot to recover. But having those fun little moments make the Mies feel more like your team, and not just paperweights you occasionally have to take care of. That's probably my favourite part of Miitopia, watching all their personalities come together. In the inns that serve as your rest stop and home base, you can serve up their favourite foods, buy them cool things like weapons and armour, play games, and let them bond with other team members. I prefer this side of things way more than the combat, which just felt tacked on to me. I disagree. I thought both sides complement each other well. The more you fight and explore, the more money you earn, the more cool things you can buy your characters. And the stronger bond the Mies have with each other, the more cool abilities you can unlock in later fights. It's not a game you would want to play for a big chunk of time in one sitting, but its weirdness keeps things fun. Having come in with fresh eyes, Jem, what did you think of Miitopia overall? I think it's definitely got charm, but I can't say I'm really sold on this one. The combat feels too repetitive and drags everything out. Without more solid gameplay foundations, the novelty of funny faces and the Mii's particular brand of zany humour faded pretty quickly for me. So I'm giving Miitopia two out of five rubber chickens. This is essentially the same game I played four years ago, but with far better graphics. It can feel like you're doing a lot of watching things happen rather than actually playing, but I didn't mind so much here. It's got a good light-hearted energy to it that I really enjoyed. Plus, I love making Mii's. So it's gonna be three and a half out of five rubber chickens from me. That's what she looks like. This is what Pelican looks like, and that's not my fault. Oh, oh, hello. It's time that I regale you with another intriguing origin story from the big book of gaming past. This week, the lively limbless hero with helicopter hair, Rayman! <laughs> first officially met Rayman in the 1995 game of the same name for the Atari Jaguar, Sega Saturn, Sony PlayStation and PC. But did you know that Rayman almost debuted on the Super Nintendo? That's right, French game designer and Rayman creator Michel Ancel worked on a prototype of a Rayman game for the Super Nintendo console in the early 1990s. Sadly, due to technical issues, this Super Nintendo, or SNES, game was not to be, and the prototype was thought to have been lost to the ages. However, in 2016, Ancel revealed that he had recovered a version of the SNES prototype. Retro game enthusiast Omar Cornut later released an excerpt of a stage playable through emulation, allowing a short part of this long-lost relic to finally be experienced. <laughs> The storyline of such early Rayman prototypes also started out a bit differently to the one we would come to know. It initially followed 10-year-old Jimmy, who enters a fantasy kingdom called Here It's Cool in his computer. Here, he must transform into the superhero Rayman to save the world from an evil power. But by the time the first official Rayman game came out, the story had changed. 
And despite having man in his name, it seemed that Rayman wasn't quite human. So, what is he exactly? We learn from a trailer for 2011's Rayman Origins that, according to legend, Rayman arose from deep within the so-called primordial forest. Not quite man, not quite vegetable, he is referred to as a thingamajig. Which brings us to one of Rayman's signature features. He has nothing to connect his hands, feet, or head to his body. But why, you may ask? The Rayman Origins manual suggests this lack of limbs could be due to a lack of lums, the magical in-game orb creatures that represent light energy. Though it's also widely reported that the processing limitations of 1990s console game development just made it easier to animate characters without those pesky arms, legs, or a neck. <laughs> But it soon became clear that having detached hands, feet, and head was all just part of that Rayman charm. A feature, not a bug, as they say. Rayman also played a key part in the origin story of some other iconic gaming characters. Those cheeky, chortling, and at times truly terrifying rabbits, who first appeared in 2006's Rayman Raving Rabbids. They, of course, went on to spawn a popular gaming franchise of their own. Eventually, Rayman would return to center stage in 2011's Rayman Origins and 2013's Rayman Legends. These fantastic co-op platformers enhanced the whimsical Rayman art and music style and proved themselves to be cornerstones of the genre, giving Mario a run and jump for his money. <laughs> but it's been eight long years since we've seen what Rayman is up to, Oh, of course, he's had some adventures on mobile platforms, but surely Rayman is eager for his next escapade. But with no word of any major new Rayman games in the works, we can only wonder what the future will bring for our favorite thingamajig. <laughs> ah, ah, what story shall I share next? Oh, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Okie dokie, Bicycle Spokey, it is time for Ask SP. Okie dokie, Bicycle Spokey, that's a new one. I like it, I think. Oh, thanks. Uh, shall we get stuck into these questions? Let's do it. And first up, we have a video from Jacob. Hi, GGSP. My name is Jacob, and I've got one question for you. Can you ride Pokemon in Pokemon Shield? And if you can, how do you do it? And also, P.S. Darren, do these. Ooh, emoticon fun! <clears throat> ka ching ah. Waka waka waka! Boo. Bye! Thanks, Jacob! Oh, I love a question that's short and sweet. Unfortunately, though, unlike in Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu, where you are able to ride certain Pokemon, it's not currently possible to do so in Pokemon Sword and Shield, as far as I know. Which is a real shame. I love being able to cling to my Snorlax's tummy and wander around town. Oh, that's adorable! But moving right along now to an email question from Cooper in WA. Hi there, GGSP. I have been a fan of this show for many years and have a question about Super Mario All-Stars for the Switch. In Super Mario 64, there is a glitch called a backwards long jump, or BLJ, and I would like to know how to do it on Switch. Thanks, regards, Cooper. Thanks, Cooper. Glad to hear you're a fan of the show. Darren loves talking about glitches, so let's see if he knows about this one. I bet he will. Hello, hello, Darren speaking. Hey, Darren, we have a glitch question here for you. A glitch sitch, I suppose. Can you do the backwards long jump glitch in Super Mario All-Stars version of Super Mario 64? Also, what is it? Oh, well, speedrunners of Super Mario 64 have long been aware of this little exploit from the original 1996 release of the game for the Nintendo 64. In short, by repeating a maneuver to long jump backwards, some adept players were able to move fast enough to skip through frames. Jumping backwards avoided the inbuilt speed limit or speed cap that was in place for forward oriented jumps, you see. This then enabled players to boost through walls and doors and things, rather than necessarily needing to collect the right number of stars to unlock access to certain areas. 
But the backwards long jump glitch was reportedly removed from the 1997 version of Super Mario 64, which was the one released in Australia. And it does not appear to be possible on the Super Mario All-Stars version of Super Mario 64 on the Switch either. So, no glitch on Switch? No glitch on Switch. Ah, oh, well, thanks for the info anyway, Darren. My pleasure. So long. Bye, boy. Bye. <laughs> Uh, I wonder if that backwards long jump thing would work in real life. Uh, just think of all the time you would save. I don't think so, Rad. Also, we would definitely fall over, so let's not. <laughs> what if I'm really careful? Uh, anyway, on to another video now, and here's one from Abby. Hi, GGSP. My name is Abby, and I have two questions for you today. My first question is if and when will Fall Guys come to Xbox? My second question? is what is the easiest way to get pearls in Animal Crossing? Thank you, and Raj, please do these. Whee! <laughs> Thanks, Abby. In answer to your first question about if and when Fall Guys will come to Xbox, well, the game was originally supposed to be out around the middle of this year for Xbox. But at the end of April, the developers announced that the launch of the game on Xbox and also on Switch would be delayed. Ah, such is life, such is games. Here's hoping we won't have to wait too long. Indeed. As for the easiest way to get pearls in Animal Crossing New Horizons, well, to find pearls, you'll need to make sure you have a wetsuit equipped and then go diving in the ocean, searching out for those spots where you see bubbles. Once you find some, dive down towards the shadow to retrieve what's there. And it might take a while, but eventually you should hopefully find a pearl. <laughs> Alternatively, if you find a scallop while diving, you can trade those for pearls through Pascal when he appears. And personally, I've had a bit more luck getting pearls through the scallop trade than finding them out in the big blue. But anyway, it looks like that's all the time we have for Ask SP today. If you'd like to send us a question, go here to find out how. And make it a video and it might just get selected for the show, earning you some sweet GGSP lootables. Radio potato, let's go. So many jaunty rhymy expressions, Rad. Oh, and I have more. Alrighty, Rooney, fork and spoonie. Loot kangaroo! Fare thee well, magic spell. Actually, it is time to say goodbye, but make sure you catch us next week because we'll be tackling some multiplayer dodgeball mayhem in a review of Knockout City. Gotcha. That'll be all, dodgeball. Time to go, pizza dough. Until next time, gem out. Don't pout, rat out. See you later, particle accelerator. Darren out.